all right i've been teaching on the spirit of adoption and i'm going to continue teaching on that in this service knowledge is not complete when you don't know why and how every time you receive knowledge it's incomplete until you know the why and the how very important philemon verse 6 the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in christ jesus meaning that we have same thing in us and same thing that is in christ which is in you in christ meaning the believer and christ share the same identity which is in you in christ the word acknowledge is to know precisely or to know something accurately acknowledge the greek word epignosis it does not mean rumor rumor is not accurate rumor is not precise some folks um, their christianity is based on what people say they say when we pray god answers they say when we fast wickedness is broken they say you don't have a stand you are built on rumor or your christian life is established on rumor they say i think i feel this is how i see it you are not supposed to have how you see it you are supposed to see it the way it's supposed to be seen and that is through the pages of the holy scriptures or the word of god for example you ask christians do you believe in rapture yes what is rapture and they tell you rapture is when jesus is coming to destroy the world interesting then you ask them again what do you think rapture is some people say well, rapture is god taking away the good people and leaving the bad ones interesting you ask some people what is the rapture oh they tell you where well, rapture is uh, people are going to get 666 an antichrist will come and take over the world and you know in my lifetime a number of people has been fingered as the antichrist confuse people all over the place and the reason is because they are they are they are carried about they are carried about because they know not the scripture somebody got angry with me because i said the antichrist is not a man he just got angry with me because he has been taught and he has watched movies and he has developed childhood fantasy of one world ruler that's going to rule the whole world but you won't find that doctrinally in the scripture you ask them things and they say well this is what they say why are you saying what they say when you have a bible in your hand search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life but they are they which testify of me which means jesus is the explanation of all things you will never understand anything except you look at it through the eyes of christ somebody say a good amen so the moment you don't have precise knowledge and accurate knowledge you'll be carried about by rumor you'll be roaming around with rumor when you don't know things satan will take you as a prey and take advantage of you we are not ignorant we are not ignorant of the devil's devices lest the devil should take advantage of us the devil takes advantage of a man when that man lacks precise knowledge when that man lacks accurate knowledge he becomes a prey in the hands of the devil that is why it's important to subscribe to knowledge and sit down in a church where you are taught where you are fed where you are equipped not where you are entertained there are many entertainment centers in town and event centers all over the church is not an eventful center the church is a center where christ is revealed to people where christ is made known to humanity where people are brought to the knowledge of christ precise understanding precise insight in you of every good thing in you because you are in christ james chapter 1 verse 22 but be doers of the word and not hear us only deceiving your own selves uh, the word doer is the greek word praso it means to act upon or to live on or to live in or to live at to be born again you must hear the gospel we have established that you must hear the gospel faith cometh by hearing so it's important to hear but james is saying don't just be the hearer alone but you must act upon what you hear you must be a doer not just a hearer how can you do if you have not heard so hearing is as important as doing and doing is as important as hearing so you need to hear to do 
mark chapter 4 verse 24 and he said unto them take heed what you hear with what measure you may it it shall be measured to you and unto you that here shall more be given give me the amplified translation of that scripture and he said unto them be careful what you are hearing some of you hear things on radio from morning till evening and some of you hear things from colleagues in your office and from friends around and from neighbors in your house where you live take heed what you hear be careful what you're hearing hearing regulates your life be careful what you're hearing don't just let anything walk you know, into your heart don't just let everything walk into your mind one man said don't use your dirty legs to walk on my mind because when you let people walk around you they are they are stepping on your mind and they're leaving their footprints and that's why sometimes when people have gone and you're left alone you have scars or you have footprints of their movement on your heart you, you start battling with the things they said because they left impressions they use their dirty legs to walk on, on your mind and they left prints on your mind I do not open my mind to anybody anyhow and to open your mind you must open your ears your ears are a doorway into your mind your ears your eyes what you see what you hear and what you say will be imprinted on your mind so take heed what you hear and he said to them be careful what you are hearing the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear the measure of thought and study but before there is thought and study there is hearing don't just let any garbage be spoken over you or be spoken around you or be spoken on you you've got to mind who you talk to and who talks to you you've got to select what you hear and what you listen to invest your time and life into the things that matter into the things that matter most to you especially things that build you up and things that develop you and things that determine the outcome of your life the outcome of your life is a function of the things you expose yourself to here all the time and i've discovered some people don't have value for their lives and because they don't have value for their lives they keep their lives at the mercy of anybody and anyhow to drop whatever junk they have over them I do not let you speak into my ears when I'm not sure what you have to say. I do not let you. And if I discover you don't have what to say, you don't know what to say, I do the talking while you do the, the listening. And when I'm done talking, I'm gone. You have no moment to say back to me anything you wanted to say because I don't trust what you have to say, but I trust what I have to say. And I take hold of that environment by subjugating that environment to what I have to say. I take charge of my world I don't let you control me I control me by controlling what I allow to permeate my environment I do not let any unproven and unexperienced mouth spit into my mind what it wants me to think my life is too valued and too precious I can't afford mediocrity jumping around tell your neighbor be, be careful what you're hearing it will make you or it will break you there are many broken people all over the society and it's a function of what people said to them somebody looked at you and said you are stupid you are an idiot and it broke you down why because somebody said you're stupid and somehow somehow the reason why you broke down is because it sounds like what you were thinking of yourself so somebody just confirmed externally what is happening internally so it broke you down identity is very critical and you'll never know who you are till you know who christ is once you know who christ is nobody can rattle you praise god say with me i am who god says i am i have what god says i have and i can do what god says i can do so to be born again you must hear the gospel romans 10 17 faith comet faith comet by hearing hearing the message of christ who is a doer of the word verse 23 of james chapter 1 for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was not what manner of man he is that means from the time he saw the mirror and walked away he put on a new identity from what he saw from the mirror 
He forgot who he was. But whoso look at into the perfect law of liberty. In the original Greek, it is into the law of perfect liberty. And continue therein. Keyword continue. He be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. He's a doer of the work. He does not forget what he hears. And the word is described as the law of perfect liberty. A law of perfect liberty means a principle of life that grants you perfect liberty. That's the meaning of the law of perfect liberty. And you can't get perfect liberty with the law of Moses. The law of Moses is a yoke that neither we nor our fathers could bear. But Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life where? In Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. It is called the law of perfect liberty. It is called the liberty of Christ. Christ. stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage the law of perfect liberty you can only get that in Christ Jesus the law of perfect liberty is not in the law of Moses is in Christ Jesus and it has set me free from the law of sin and death the word of God in the New Testament is the law of perfect liberty Romans chapter 3 verse 27 says where is boasting then it is excluded by what law of works nay but by the law of faith the law of faith is the law of perfect liberty is the law of the spirit of life is the same thing it's just a use of words the law of faith the law of liberty or perfect liberty it is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus somebody shout hallelujah when we begin to talk about the son of God which is what we've been dealing with adoption here we naturally think like humans when we say son of God we think of a father a mother a mother a wife a wife a mother who produces a son when we say son of God that's what comes to the natural mind that's what comes to the natural mind but that's not true when the Bible says Eve is the mother of all living, it doesn't mean Eve gave birth to everybody. It was symbolic. What it simply means is that Eve had a womb that could conceive. That's what it means. The mother of all living means she is symbolic where a, a mother is concerned because she was the first woman with a womb that carries seed. That's just the meaning of Eve being the mother of all living. Doesn't mean she gave birth to all of us. She had a womb symbolically where a child but usually it's not mothers that bring children children don't come from mothers children actually come from fathers because it's a sperm of the man that carries the seed that is fertilized and brought forth as a child that's why the dna is always the dna of the father now jesus therefore being the son of god what are we referring to and so we began to look at the word christian and we said there is nowhere in the bible the holy ghost refers to believers as christians nowhere in the whole bible the holy ghost calls us christians the first time people were called christians is in acts chapter 11 and it was unbelievers that used that name to label people that were followers of jesus it was in the holy ghost it was unbelievers that called the first people who were following jesus christians and after that nobody else in the epistles not even brother paul for once by mistake or by a slip of tongue ever referred to believers as christians the only person that used that word one more time and that makes it twice in the new testament was brother peter we saw that in first peter chapter 4 where peter was talking about christian suffering he said when you suffer you suffer as a christian only twice but all over the new testament believers were identified as believers 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 we are believers we don't believe because we are believers that's our nature we believe naturally what do we believe the gospel was the gospel he died he was buried on the third day he rose again for my justification that is the gospel that is what i believe and when i believe that gospel it made a believer out of me so a believer is not what i think or what i try to do that's my identity or my dna I believe the word of God naturally.
The word Christian is not a description of the Holy Spirit for the man who has received Christ. Since God's revelation is not in pictures but words, we must pay attention to words. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Somebody shout, I receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God had sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying what? So the spirit of the son is where? In your heart. Where is the spirit of the son? Now let me ask you, is the spirit of the son the spirit of adoption? Yes. Uh, let's try it again. Is the spirit of the son the spirit of adoption? Yes. Is the spirit of adoption the spirit of the son? Yes. Are you sure of what you're saying? Yes. I'm going to take it to another level and I hope you don't get confused. Let me try again the elementary class. Is the spirit of the son the spirit of adoption? Yes. Is the spirit of adoption the spirit of the son? Yes. Where is the spirit of the son? Where is the spirit of adoption? What does he cry? So a man that is born of God, does he call Jehovah Jireh? What does he call? Because the spirit in him, what does he say? Abba Father. The spirit of the son cries Abba Father. Now please keep that somewhere because we will work with it in another few minutes. Let me ask you another question. Do you have a first degree spirit or second degree spirit or third degree spirit? Huh? The spirit of Jesus, is it the same with your spirit? Is the spirit of Jesus superior to your spirit? Who is Jesus? The Son. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? I want to hear your voices. You're looking finer than your child. Who is Jesus? Okay. You shouted everybody outside. So if Jesus is the son, the spirit of the son is the spirit of who? Of Jesus. Okay? The spirit of the son is the spirit of who? Where is it? In your heart. So the spirit of Jesus is in your heart? Okay, whose spirit is in your heart? And what is another name for the spirit of Jesus? The spirit of? The spirit of? So where is the spirit of adoption? Where is the spirit of Jesus? Amen. Jesus and his spirit, are they apart? No. Are they together? Yes. So where is the spirit of Jesus? Amen. Where is Jesus? Okay. So the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of adoption, the spirit of the son, all of them put together are inside who? Alright, so where are the people here that carry the spirit of Jesus on their inside? Alright, somebody shout, I have the spirit of adoption because i believe the gospel of his resurrection can i hear a powerful amen the word for that conformed to his image in romans 8 29 is somofo somofo means one with jesus somofo s-o-m-o-f-o -O -O, conformed romans 8 29 that's the greek word for the nature somofo romans chapter 8 verse 9 but you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his question is the spirit of god the spirit of christ are they the same or two okay verse 10 and if christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth where? In you. Where is the spirit dwelling? Now, so he's talking about the resurrection of Jesus. Verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you're a son of God, say I'm a son of God. And I am led by the spirit of God. Verse 15. 
for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father abba is the spirit of christ spirit of god spirit of adoption yes. all right we're going to go into something in a few minutes so when it comes to us it's called the spirit of adoption to show that what we have is exactly what is in jesus our spirit is exactly like that of jesus now verse 18 for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us give me verse 16 the spirit is said bear a witness with our spirit that we are the children of god is our spirit a child of god likewise the spirit itself bear a witness with our spirit that we are children of god is our spirit children of god so is your spirit a child of god very good don't be confused your spirit is a child of god okay child of god doesn't mean child of god child of god means by nature like human being you cannot look at a human being and say goat no it's an abuse because it's not a goat goat have their nature humans have their nature so question is your spirit a child of god yes. what does it mean for your spirit to be a child of god it means your spirit is born of god therefore it has the same nature with god there is a term called holy spirit what is the term how many of you have had holy spirit before okay how many of you have had the word holy ghost so holy spirit and holy ghost which one is correct holy spirit. <laughs> eh? they are, the are they the same yes. what is a spirit and what is a ghost <laughs> it's semantics right the body without the spirit is dead Okay? The spirit without the body is life. So question. Must a spirit have a body? No. Huh? No. So a spirit without a body is called what? Ghost. Holy ghost. Or holy spirit. Same thing. Don't be confused. Holy ghost holy spirit same thing so why is that spirit called holy why is it called holy spirit because satan is a spirit angels are spirits demons are spirits okay so the reason why we put holy on this particular spirit is because this particular spirit has to be distinguished from the rest and that's why he is called holy now what's the meaning of holy the word holy is the greek word hagios hagios means sacred or set apart set apart sacred sacred spirit set apart spirit or the spirit that is sacred or in its own class from other spirits holy spirit holy ghost sacred ghost sacred spirit set apart spirit let me also ask you a question do you have a spirit yes. is your spirit holy yes. so what do you have holy correct you are a holy nation you are a peculiar people you are a chosen generation why are you holy you are called out of darkness set apart set apart who is holy is any holy brother in this church what about holy sisters now somebody shout i am holy somebody shout i am set apart somebody say my spirit is holy spirit i didn't hear your amen is the spirit of god holy spirit yes. please answer well whether you know it or not okay just answer well is the spirit of god the holy spirit yes. is the spirit of christ the holy spirit yes. is the spirit of christ the spirit of adoption yes. 
Is the spirit of adoption the spirit of God? Yes. Is the spirit of God the Holy Spirit? Yes. Is the Holy Spirit the spirit of adoption? Yes. So the Holy Spirit talks about God and is also found in the believer. The Holy Spirit talks about God and is also found in the believer. So when people tell you after you're born again, come and receive the Holy Spirit, is they are either insulting you or they are trying to bring their ignorance on your intelligence. You couldn't have been born again if you don't have the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that born you again. Is that English like that? If there is none, it is for the purpose of understanding. Say communication. It's communication English. It's not born twice. Born again is born anew. It's not in, that again is not English again. It's Bible again. It means born anew or born from above. To be born again is not born twice. Okay? So you are born again, born anew, born from above by the Holy Spirit of God. So it, once you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit. Don't be looking for the Holy Spirit. Breathe up on me, bread of God. Get born again. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Get born again. When you got born again, you are born of the Spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You don't need more Holy Ghost. You have all the Holy Ghost. You don't need fresh Holy Ghost. He is fresh inside you. Yes. Shout glory. glory. All those emotional songs. Sweep them from your, from your shelf. Say I'm born of the spirit. Say I have the Holy Ghost. Say I don't have small Holy Ghost. I have the whole Holy Ghost. Say I'm born of the spirit. Say the spirit of God is in me. Shout amen to that. You don't have to be asking for Holy Ghost, fall and fresh. It's fresh inside you. Just open your mouth, man. To lo, to lo, to lo, to lo, to. And there's a fresh outpouring. Once you start Ilamona, Kilanange, Korotosa, Ege, Hegela, Hegela, Onaga, Onaga, Elena, Olana. It may look like you're feeling one kind. Just stay there for some time. After a few minutes or seconds, you, you start feeling the freshness. Why? Because there is a refreshing on your inside. So, you beloved building up your most holy faith rising higher and higher and higher by praying in the holy ghost say my spirit, my spirit. is the holy spirit don't be afraid say it very loud my spirit, my spirit. is the holy spirit say when i move i am carrying all of the holy spirit on my inside god on my inside can i hear a powerful amen when you carry God on your inside, can you be confused? No. Is God confused? No. I declare over you from this day, you are far from the path of confusion. Amen. You will never be confused anymore. Amen. Somebody shout, I have direction. I have, I have clarity. I have. Say, my thoughts are clear. Amen. Say, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I have the spirit of God. I, I walk in the spirit I and I can never be confused Amen. and I will not be deceived. Because the Spirit of God on my inside bears witness. Shout Amen to that. Glory to God. Once you are born again, your spirit is holy. In 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And such were some of you. But you are washed. But you are sanctified. If you are sanctified, shout, I am sanctified. But you are justified. If you are justified, shout, I am justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause it's not a shame to call them brethren. So the Spirit of the Son is holy. My Spirit is holy, sacred to God. So the Spirit of adoption is Holy Spirit. That's who we are. We have been conformed to the image of his Son. What he is, we are. 
what he has we have the resurrection of jesus is the gospel that's what's available to us i have received the spirit of adoption i didn't receive the spirit of incarnation i received the spirit of adoption now are we the sons of god we came from the dead just like jesus god gave birth to us when jesus rose he rose to identify with us we have a father now we have a family now and we have an inheritance glory to god john says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed behold james says he beholded himself and continues daring behold behold if any man be in christ all things are passed away behold 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 look at it look at it don't be confused all things are new glory to god glory to god the resurrection of jesus gave us sonship sonship we don't have a covenant with god say with me i don't have a covenant with god say it very loud louder there are some churches they tell you covenant day of long life is fraud total fraud covenant day of success covenant day of longevity covenant day of prosperity covenant day of protection is all fraud you and god don't have covenant never never you don't have covenant with god should i prove it yes. okay if you want me to prove it define covenant i'm waiting because once you can define covenant anybody can use nyama nyama and rub on your head a covenant is a pledge a vow an agreement between two or three parties to carry out terms and if you break the term you're punished if you and god have covenant you'll be punished every day because as a man you'll be breaking the term every day god discover you don't have what it takes to be in covenant with him so he saved you from covenant <laughs> glory <laughs> somebody shout i don't have a covenant with god Say, I am a fruit of the covenant. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like running around this building. Who is a fruit of the covenant? You are a fruit, you are a product of the covenant. So where is the covenant? Jesus and God. Who is Jesus? Man's representative. Who is God? Deity's representative. So the covenant is between God and God. God cannot fail. God cannot fail. So the covenant is a perfect covenant between deity himself. And because he can't fail, the covenant cannot be broken. And based on that covenant, they produce a family. We are the family of that covenant. Glory to God. Somebody shout glory. So by two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. So when a church begins to tell you covenant day of this, they are looking for your pocket. Because the moment they start talking covenant day of this, they will give you conditions. And the conditions will end in sacrificial offering. Anywhere you hear teaching on covenant, they will give you conditions. And all the time, it will end in collecting an offering from you for what does not exist. That's why I call it fraud. It's fraud. You don't have covenant with God. God has covenant with himself. And out of that covenant, he produced a family. When my father and mother met, I was not there. I am a fruit of their relationship. We are a fruit of the relationship between God and Jesus. We came out of that relationship. Based on the covenant that exists between them, I am protected. I am kept. I am supplied for. I am defended. I'm blessed. I'm justified. I'm accepted. I am holy. I am righteous. Glory to God. Somebody shout glory. 
Say, I am a fruit of the covenant between Jesus and the Father. Shout amen. amen. Say, God and I, no covenant. But I am a product of an existing covenant. Say amen to that. Amen. When my father and my mother gave back to me, I'm a product of their covenant relationship. Therefore, they pay my school fees. They provide me food to eat. They give me a house to live. And my father defends me. Jimana. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory. Shout yes. Yeah. Sit down, let me push this thing. All of us here, we are products of the covenant. That's why you come into the family by believing in the resurrection. You believe that message. When you believe that message, you are born. You are born. You are born. You didn't make covenant. You are born as a result of the covenant. So we are children of the covenant you didn't hear what i said we are children of the covenant we don't make the covenant we are only beneficiaries of that covenant if you're hearing say i hear you that's why the moment you understand sickness cannot stay in your body healing becomes bread for the children healing becomes bread for who for the children where are the children so whatever is wrong in your body be healed right now somebody shout i eat my bread in jesus name shout amen to that i found your word i ate them they are the joy and the rejoicing of my heart and he sent his word and his word he left them and his word delivered them from all how many how many how many how many i decree today whatever is not working in your favor expires right now it expires right now say with me in the name of jesus i receive my bread as a child of the covenant healing for my body strength for my mind success for my hands shout amen to that eh, just because you don't do covenant why are you fighting it it's not in the bible it's fraud the bible is our final authority my allegiance is to the bible we're not native doctors we're men of god and we have a book of reference it's called the holy scriptures you and god can't have covenant you have never had covenant <laughs> never even in the old testament no man has ever had covenant with god you don't have the word with all. covenant is between deity and deity man is a product of that see Moses tried to give them covenant in the Old Testament. Nobody could keep it. Is it not true? That's what we call the law. Nobody. Peter said, neither we nor our fathers. None of us could keep it. Nobody, including Moses himself. In fact, Moses was the first breaker of the whole thing. He said, don't marry outside Egypt. Then he went to Dubai for holiday and saw Ethiopian babe. He married and brought back. So God, on our behalf, has kept the terms of the covenant and freed us from it. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh god sending his son in the likeness in the likeness kabayada in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin destroyed sin in the flesh why that the righteousness of god may be fulfilled in us not by us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit we are the fruit of the covenant we are the result of the covenant we are in a family he is our father we are his sons we are his sons as jesus is right now i have received the spirit of christ i have received the spirit of his son i have received the spirit of adoption i have received the holy spirit and our utterance now by adoption is father 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 somebody shout abba 
So now you can leave this service and lift your hands in your living room when you get home, feeling so grateful for what God has done, and you just say, Thank you, Abba Father. That's the spirit of adoption. No harassment, no tension, no tension, no harassment. My father has got my back, and my father is stronger than all. Amen. Amen. My father owns the world, so everything will be all right. Glory to God. The knowledge of that keeps you in perfect peace. There is another word that has been used apart from the word christian in the body of christ very strongly and that is the word disciple believers are not referred to as disciples we are not disciples of jesus in the whole epistles you will never see the word disciple in the epistles but you will find the word believer the word disciple is a greek word mathesis mathesis just like you have maths, like mathematics, maths, E T E S, mathetes. It's a contrast of didaskalos. Didaskalos. Didaskalos is a Greek word for teacher. Didaskalos. All right? So, didaskalos is a teacher. So, to have a disciple, you must have a teacher. You must have a didaskalos for you to have a mathetes. You must have a didaskalos. I'm speaking Greek now. It's not tongues. So for you to be a disciple, you must have a teacher. For you to have a teacher, you must be a student. And disciple was prominently used in the four gospels. It was used also in Acts of the Apostles. But you see, in Acts of the Apostles, it was a carryover from the gospels. A carryover. That's why you won't find it in the epistles now in case you don't know what i mean by the gospels and the epistles please get my previous teaching it will help you understand all this vocabulary they are bible grammars but in the epistles you will not see the word disciple but you will see it in the gospels you will see it in acts as a carryover now jesus had disciples in the gospels why did jesus have disciples if you observe john chapter 3 verse 2 nicodemus said to jesus we know that thou art a teacher so jesus was recognized as a rabbi or a teacher come from god so as a teacher as a didaskalos he was qualified to have a mathetis okay as a teacher he could have disciples all right and you cannot be a disciple if you don't have a teacher so there must be a teacher for there to be a disciple and there must be a disciple for there to be a teacher we're not jesus's disciples jesus had only 12 disciples and 12 of them are gone hello were they not 12 where are they they are gone that and nobody else after that okay so none of us is a disciple of jesus so the word disciple is not used for believers so now the question is why is it there in the bible please take note the intent of a teacher is to make sure the disciple is a follower or a teacher desires for his disciple to imitate him or copy him anywhere there's a teacher his intention is to make his follower copy him so a disciple is an imitator or someone who copies his teacher and the word disciple does not occur in the epistles at all it occurs in the four gospels and in the acts of the apostles as a carryover matthew 28 verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe he didn't say make disciples all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world the word disciple didn't occur there he says teaching all nations teaching them to observe all i have taught you he simply said teach teach he didn't say make disciples he said teach teach not make teach 
teach all right now he said to teach them but he didn't tell us what they will become he just said teach them mark 16 15 and he said unto them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues he didn't use the word disciple no disciple use the word believe believe Luke 24 47 and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem and you are witnesses of these things so a believer has received an ability but that ability is not transferred by teaching you know what I'm simply saying you didn't become a son of God by teaching you became a son of God by believing the gospel the moment you believe the gospel BAM you became a son of God it's not teaching that makes you a son is faith in the gospel but some people will tell you that it is a process you know salvation is a process where you believe then you start hearing teaching then you start conforming and it could take time lie fatal lie let me ask all of you a question how many of you women here that have given birth to children you delivered your child in a process the day you enter labor ward when you push the head came out then you went home you kept the head in a shelf or showcase it's okay it has started the lord has begun he will finish after six months you went to the labor ward push boom two hands came out Fiam! you carry them <laughs> the lord is working you drop the two hands around with the head after another 10 months the thing started again you went Poo! the neck down to the waist came out bam ah, ah, the lord will soon finish it the child is going to be complete it's a process is there any woman that delivers like that so if women don't deliver like this the birth of a spiritual child is not in process the day you were born you were born complete Say, I'm complete in him. Shout it very loud. Say, I'm a complete son of God. Say it again. Say it one more time. Now, say very loud. What is in Jesus is in me. As he is, I am. Not by my action, but by my nature. You didn't say it well. Not by my actions, but by my nature. Tell her neighbor, stop judging me. By my actions. Look at my nature. My nature is my reality. I didn't hear your amen. Don't judge me by my action. Judge me by my nature. I'm not a Christian because I was a good person. I'm a Christian because I believe in the gospel. And when I believe in the gospel, I was born again. Now that I am learning of Christ, what is inside is coming out. It may not come out in one day, but give me some time. My full identity will manifest. Did I just say something here? The first 1,000 of you whose amen will come like thunder, I declare the reality of your identity is manifesting. Stand on your feet, look at your neighbor and say, look at me very well. You're standing by Jesus. I am Christ. What did you say? Huh? did you say where is Christ if you be Christ then are you Abraham's seed somebody said don't mind them in power city now they have said they are Christ say it again no I want you to be loud so they can get more angry say that's my name Christ. Christ say that's my name, that's my name. Righteous. righteous say that's my name, that's my name. Light. light say that's my name, that's my name. Justified. justified who is who am I talking to in this building that's who you are in Christ 
that's your true identity. And your, your situations don't define you. Your identity defines you. Somebody shout, I am complete in him. Somebody shout, I'm complete in him. And I declare whatever does not look like Christ around you, whatever does not look like Christ around your life and family, as your amen will come like thunder, it is flushed out of your family. I decree and declare over you today by the finished work of Christ whatever doesn't look like Jesus in your health on your job in your marriage in your family around your life as your amen comes like thunder we strip it off your life it is flushed off your body Satan stop your aggression we resist you in the name of Jesus your body is healed your finances are restored your career is restored your career is restored your career is restored your career is restored in the name of Jesus I command miracles to overtake you this week there are three of you right now I'm seeing you receiving new things this week and those three people your amen is coming like thunder right now receive it in the name of jesus take 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 delivery in the name of jesus your long delay is cancelled enter into your miracle enter into your testimony who am i talking to in this building you've been waiting for this thing for a long time i even hear two years i hear two years i hear two years you've been waiting for two years but this week it has arrived it has arrived ah ah, ah. it has arrived if your amen is louder receive it by grace receive it by grace receive it by grace barriers are broken barriers are broken delays are cancelled stagnation is aborted oppression is busted receive it by favor if you receive it let your amen come on a note of finality you're blessed beyond the cause you're blessed beyond the cause you are lifted above situations enjoy the fullness of redemption in the name of jesus it is done it is done in jesus precious name can I hear that amen on a note of finality? Yeah. Listen to me people this week Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice You will have a reason to testify yeah. Good things are going to overtake you this week Some of you things you've been waiting for Things that nobody even remembered They will wake up this week This week will be a week of suddenly for some of you Suddenly, 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 uh -uh, su uh -uh, su uh -uh, suddenly, uh -uh. where is the person harvesting suddenly? If you are the one, shout, I receive, I receive. It's going to be a week of suddenly, good things, new things, better things. 